Here we're going to create a very simple iOS app for picking six lucky numbers. Here we can see it running in the simulator. Notice the user will be able to touch an individual button to pick one new lucky number or be able to hit the pick button and choose a whole new set of six numbers. Well, you have a segment of control that allow the user to dictate what the maximum number can be. So in this case, the numbers will be between 1 and 49 exclusive or between 1 and 56. So let's go ahead and create this project. Notice we're going to be following the model view controller software design pattern. In this case, all of our objects are going to fall into one of three categories. They're either going to be view objects. Now view objects are going to be things like buttons and views and labels and segmented controls, all the things that the user sees and interacts with. Those are going to be our view objects. Model objects are going to be the opposite. They're going to be things that are under the hood that control the internal logic, that are view agnostic. The controller objects are going to be the go-between. They're going to be the mediator between view objects and model objects. So if something changes in the model, it'll speak to the controller, will make sure that the corresponding view objects are changed. Or if the, the user interacts with one of the view objects, the controller will make sure the model objects are aware of that. So And Apple follows these, these this design pattern in all of its UI kit framework. So, Hopefully that'll kind of demystify some of the names of, of some of the objects. So let's go ahead and, and open Xcode. So I'm going to create a new pro, a new project. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to I'm going to, we're going to do this kind of from scratch. I'm going to I'm going to choose the empty application template under iOS. So under iOS, I'm going to choose application empty application, and go ahead and choose next. And I'm going to go ahead and call my project. Lotto Foo. I'll give it a class prefix of say Lotto. And you notice we could target the iPad or the iPhone, or let's go ahead and just target. We'll start by writing an iPhone app, but let's go ahead and target both. So eventually we'll create both an iPhone and an iPad app if, if needed. So, so go ahead and do that. Hit next. And I'm going to make sure that Xcode creates a git repository for version control. So, so we'll go ahead and create that. So you'll notice over here in the navigator we can see there's not really much in the project right now. We have the, the source code for the application delegate class. We've got uh, uh, an Xcode assets file that will contain some images for launching the app and there'll be some other stuff there. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to start by creating our controller. So I'm going to go under File, New, and I'm going to say New File, and I'm going to create a new Objective-C class, a Cocoa Touch Objective-C class. So I'm going to hit Next, and I'm going to, I'm going to make sure this is a subclass of UI View Controller, and I'm going to call it Lotto View Controller. And I'm going to make sure that the the button is checked with a nib for user interface. In the, in the future we'll be focusing on using storyboards, but I figure to get started we should just work with a good old-fashioned nib file. And that nib file is going to contain all our, of our view controls that we'll need in this particular example. So go ahead and create that, hit next, make sure the target is checked and we'll say create. And so you're going to see that created three files, uh, the .h and .m files for the source code for our controller. You can see the header file is very not much to the, the header file. The .m file has a few stub methods, important stub methods that we'll be using. And then we'll have our nib file, and that's kind of where we want to stop. So the nib file actually will contain serialized UI controls. So they'll all be freeze-dried and placed in here. So we're actually going to lay out what our app is going to look like, at least in on an iPhone in portrait mode. Later on we'll worry about how to make this look good in landscape mode or on the iPad or, or with other form factors. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start I'm going to start laying out the various components so I'm going to begin, I'm going to go over here in Xcode in my library here, and I'm going to grab a label. And I'm just going to drag it on up here. And I'm going to follow these blue guidelines that 
the interface builder tool gives me. I'm going to size size my label. And in the inspector, under the attributes inspector, I'm going to make sure that's centered. And let's let's make it, actually, I'm going to make it a, um, a uh, let's see, let's make it a bold font. Let's make it system bold. And I don't know, let's go about 25. I'll call it, we can, no, let's make it, we can make, yeah, that's good. We'll make it 25, and I'll change the title to Lucky Lotto. just a few more all right so there's there's our label so now we've we, and you notice here and we get a hierarchical view of, of all the objects in our nib file so there's some placeholder objects which we can talk about later but you'll notice so far that the view is going to be the main the main UI view for our application and we just added a label so this label is actually a sub view of the main view of our app. So now what I want to do is I want to add my six buttons. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to place all those buttons inside another UI view. So I'm going to go down into my objects in my object library here and I'm going to go and find just a bare view. And I'm going to grab that and I'm going to kind of plop that on here following the guidelines here and try to and try to resize it here. It's a little tricky because you can't see it as you're dragging it. So there we, there we go. And then I'm going to kind of size it more or less like I want it. And I'm going to go ahead and change the, the background color to say a light, a light gray so I can actually just see this thing. All right, now this is merely just going to be a container for my button. So I'm going to go back up my objects. I'm going to find a button. Now I want to put six of these things in here. So I want to make sure that I can fit six of them in here. Um, my, my view here, if I look in the size inspector, I can see it's about 280 wide. So if I want to get six buttons in here, they're going to have to be what less, less than 24. We'll make, we'll make these, um, these buttons about 35 wide. So I'm going to go ahead and just resize it over here in the size inspector. Make it a little bit taller. I'm going to change the title. This is going to be the first button. I'll give it a title of 01. And over in the attributes, the attributes inspector, let's up its font to say, there, let's make the font 25. So I'm going to make, and I'm going to go ahead and change the background here. So you can you can see under the attributes inspector, you can you can actually change a lot of the properties. So it's a, it's actually a view, and I'm going to change its background. Let's see, what's a good background color? I'll change it to blue. Or whatever that color is. So I'm going to go ahead and make six copies of this thing and try to fit them in here. There's one, there's two, three, four, five, and six. So I've got six buttons that kind of fit in there more or less. Let me go ahead and I'm going to kind of center in there. We're going to worry about the exact layout later but I like to make it look, look pretty as I'm designing it. So I'm going to change the titles, the initial titles, just so I can distinguish between these three. I'm going to label them. There's, they're going to con eventually contain a two-digit number, so I want to make sure that they can hold a two-digit number. All right, so there's my, and I'm going to take the controlling view and kind of line it around there. All right, so there are my, my, my six buttons. All right, so now I want to get a segmented control. I'm going to go ahead and grab a segmented control, and I'm going to plop it up here. And I'm going to give the label for the first value of 49, and for the second value, I'm going to give it a label of, of 56. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger, a little wider. So if you look under the size inspector, you're not going to be able to change its height. The, when, the, when the font changes, the, the height of this control will actually change. So so we're going to leave the height kind of indeterminate at this point and leave it at that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pop another label in there, kind of right above it. And I'm going to change the label to nice. max value and kind of center it above that. Now, here's another little trick. Actually, these six buttons I actually had embedded in a view. I'd actually like to embed these into a sub view as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these and then I'm going to go up to the menu and under editor I'm going to say embed in view. 
that boom, and that'll automatically embed all that stuff in, in a view. I'm going to kind of align that view. Right now, I just need one other button that's going to be my pick button here. And so we'll drop that in there. By the way, I'm going to, I can pick these elements over here. I'm going to pick this view. I'm going to set its background as well. So in the attributes inspector, I'm going to pick it to have a back uh, so I can see it. And then this particular button, later on, all these we'll do some artwork or whatever and change this, but for now I just like to be able to see them when I'm working with them in Interface Builder. So I'm going to go ahead and change the, um, the background of this as well to, to say a light gray color as well so I can see it. And let's resize it to kind of more or less what we're going to want. And change its title to pick. And I'm going to go and let's change its font. Let's make, give it a nice big font. All right, so we're going to start with that. So there, there's our, our initial controls. And we'll, so there's our initial controls. And so the next thing I'm going to do, so we can actually see this, this actually running, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the, to the delegate class and I'm going to make sure that we create one of the it create an instance of our controller and make sure it's the root view controller. So under so in the implementation of the application delegate, I'm going to add an import statement for our um, Lotto view controller header file. And then you notice in my template for the application colon did finish launching with options colon method. I'm actually going to create a new instance of this and make sure that it's the root, con root view controller for the window for our app. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new instance of, of this. So let's go ahead and I'll call it lotto view, view controller. And I must go ahead and say that. Um, Alec, and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and choose a knit with nib name. So we're actually going to load this this controller from a from a nib file, and it's, and if we just pass in nil for the nib name, it'll use the same nib name as the class name, and for the bundle, if we use nil, it'll use the main bundle, which is what we, which is where it's actually stored. So. So there it is. So we created we created an instance of our view controller, and I'm going to go ahead and make it a, 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 the root view controller for our window. So there we go. go I'm going to go ahead and save. I'm going to go ahead and look, go ahead and um, get rid of the, the version this version that's running here, and let's. Go ahead in the simulator. I'm going to go ahead and simulate this on the iPhone Retina. Let's go ahead and build. Yeah, build. No issues. It comes up, and you can see we can actually play with it. Of course, it doesn't do anything at this point, but we've got our initial view up and running. So, so next time, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create our model object and actually set up all the outlets and actions so this thing actually does something. But, all right, we'll see you on the next video.